Good evening, good morning and good afternoon to everyone who is watching us all over the globe and please allow me to introduce myself. I'm your host today, my name is Angela and I'm doing my PhD at Peking University School of Journalism and Communication. So today what you're watching, this is an info session brought to you at Peking University where we're going to introduce our schools, our programs, our entry requirements, scholarships and all necessary information so you can find out whether you want to become a part of our PKU family. So what are we going to talk about? about today. Today our trip will lead us to the School of Computer Science and we will have a deeper understanding what's available and learn about range of opportunities this school provide. And today, especially for you, we have invited two representatives and also prepared a video sharing from students so you can have more information and overview and we will also answer your questions. So right now it's right about time to introduce our honorable guests today. So they are an associate professor at the School of Computer Science, Professor Kai Guibian. So please, can you introduce yourself and also say hello to the audience? Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kai Guibian. I'm a faculty member in the School of Computer Science at Peking University. And my research interests interest include uh, the computer networks and the mobile computing. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. So I also have the information that you have been serving as an associate <coughs> director of Institute of Network Computing and information systems since 2016, is that right? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and welcome. And let's introduce our honorable guest, another guest, a beautiful lady. <laughs> so, uh, Ms. Shu Yang is the international student coordinator at the School of Computer Science and she enjoys working with diverse population and is very passionate about helping foreign students. So, welcome. Thank you. Okay, can you say a few words as well? Um, sure. So um, I joined the School of Computer Science since 2019. So um, it's been over two years now, and I really enjoy working here with a diverse um, student body. Well, I think for our foreign students, maybe the, that might be their first time here in China mm -hmm. and they will go through that adaptation process and sometimes we don't know how to deal with that mm -hmm. because like something might be different. So you see, we have a special teacher here, so please, you can bother her. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I think that right now it's right about time to give the floor to Professor Kai Guibian to start the introduction. Okay. Okay, thank you, Angela. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our uh, inform session. And today we will present a brief overview and the introduction to the School of Computer Science at Peking University. At the front page, you will see two pictures. They are two photos of our uh, computer science building located in two separate ca campuses of Peking University. The left one is the main building in our main campus. And the right one is the new building in our new campus. And uh, the School of Computer Science is also the first unit uh, in Peking University that moved to the new campus this semester and in the year of 2021. So let's first watch a video. This will help you to quickly get an idea of what we are doing here and this introduces mainly our research. And the Department of Computer Science and Technology, which is really the Peking University's solid academic accomplishment in mathematics and science, was formally established in 1978. By inheriting Peking University's tradition of inclusiveness and freedom of thought, it has achieved remarkable results in scientific research, talent training, social service, and other aspects based on tremendous efforts of generations of teachers and students. In the future, the Department of Computer Science Technology will follow the requirements of promoting international academic frontiers and facing major national strategic needs. It aims at top 10 in computer science and technology discipline in the world to improve the discipline layout, being a global birthplace of important ideas, basic theories, original technologies, first-class talents in disciplines like computer science, artificial intelligence, software theory and engineering, and leading the development of computer science display. We sincerely welcome aspiring scholars, talented students, and innovators in the computer science field at home and abroad to join us. Architecture. It also has the other name, the 
Microprocessor Research and Development Center of Peking University. We call it NPRC. NPRC is committed to the research and design of microprocessors. These processors use an architecture based on an internally developed ISA and independent IP. The institute has completed more than 30 research projects. We developed the first microprocessor hardware software co-design platform in China. The institute has pioneered development of microprocessor and computer technology in the past decade. The low-cost computer systems designed by the institute has been lauded by the Chinese government as innovative contributions to the national information industry. Representative of the remarkable progress of Chinese computer technology, such computer systems have been widely used in all provinces throughout China. Main research areas include modern microprocessor design and hardware software co-design. Welcome to NPRC. The Institute of Network Computing and Information System was established in 2002. The research areas include database and data mining, distributed systems, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. Hundreds of research papers have been continuously published in the top venues. The Institute also emphasizes on education and pays great attention to student development. Our PhD graduates have got tenure-track faculty positions in many world-class universities. The Institute has built a strong reputation among major IT companies in China. Meanwhile, innovations and entrepreneurship are encouraged. There are at least 10 startups launched by our graduates over the past years. Welcome to the Institute of Software at Peking University. We are the top institute on software engineering in China and also in the worldwide. We have eight laboratories on all areas of software engineering, including software engineering, system software, pervasive computing, information security, human-computer interactions, knowledge and requirement engineering, programming language labs, and so on. In our institute, we have many academicians of Chinese Academy of Science, IEEE Fellow, and Academy of Europeans. So welcome to the Institute of Software and join us. Some traditional security and safety challenges are coming from the future cyber world. Cyberization has become a new form of the physical, social, mental world conjugation. For example, auto driving, chat robots, digital clone, blockchain based cryptocurrency, etc. We have solid foundation in the area of crypto engineering, domain specific software engineering, system, network, and information security. We are lying in the front of a world research community for blockchain and the future internet architecture. Welcome to join us. Our lab aims to bring graphics, image, vision, visualization, HCI, AI together for future VR AI technology. Specifically, we construct a very huge virtual world and try to remove the boundary between virtual world and the real world. Various applications, including virtual simulation, training, entertainment, inaction, can be performed in this world. We believe our AR and VR technology will significantly change the human life in the future. The Institute of Computational Linguistics, founded in 1986, is the first is the earliest research institute of cross-culture and scientific in China. Focusing on the core issues of natural language understanding, ICL has carried out systematic and in-depth research from many aspects, theory, resources, models, techniques, and applications, and has achieved many landmark research achievements. The comprehensive language knowledge base has provided the vital infrastructure 
for developing Chinese information processing technology and won the prize of the National Science and Technology Progress Award. In addition, it has made remarkable achievements in natural language understanding models and algorithms, therefore attracting the attention of international colleagues. Hi, my name is Max Wei. Welcome to the Institute of Digital Media and the National Engineer Laboratory for Video Technology. Our lab focuses on researches of intelligent media computing and artificial intelligence, including video compression and analysis, visual search, computational photography, and brain like visual information processing. For video compression, we have led the definition of AVS, audio and video coding standard in China and it has been widely used in HDTV and UHDTV broadcasting. Recently, we are actively promoting the brain-like information processing technologies. We have developed a spec-based camera system. It can achieve super high-speed visual information capture and processing. Here, we will provide you diverse education and research opportunities. Welcome you join us. Center for Energy Efficient Computing and Application, uh, we also call CICA. CICA was established in 2010. It's an important part in the area of computer architecture at Peking University, and it's also an interdisciplinary research institute. The goal of our center is to establish a world-class team, carry out cutting-edge research on the architecture and application of energy efficient computing systems, and create domestic impact and international impact. At the same time, we educate high-quality PhD students so that they have the potential to teach in top universities. You are very welcome to get in touch with us and visit our center. Hello everyone, I'm Chen Baoqian, the Executive Director of the Center on Frontiers of Computing Studies at the Peking University, short named CFCS. Founded in December 2017, CFCS is a university new initiative co-founded by Turing Award winner Professor John Hopcroft and Professor Wen Gao. Both are members of Chinese Academy of Engineering, also ACM and IGB fellows. Currently, there are eight faculty members and three more joining in this fall. The center has established a close collaboration with the world leading universities and the leading institutions enjoying frequent academic visits by scholars from around the world. There are four within chair professors at the CFCS, including two additional Turing Award winners, Professors Silver Mechani from MIT and Manuel Blum from CMU. The center stands in the frontier of theoretical computer science, such as game theory, information theory, quantum information science, and cryptography. Applied computing such as visual computing and artificial intelligence, as well as the interdisciplinary research in robotics, computational economics, and art, to name just a few. The center aims at developing the excellency on two fronts, research and education. On the research front, the center provides a world-class research environment, where innovation and impactful research is the central aim measured by professional reputation among world scholars. On the education front, the center is deeply involved in the Turing class, an elite undergraduate program that draws the cream of the crop from the PKU undergraduate talent pool. New curriculum and the pedagogy are designed and practiced in this program, cultivating a new generation of computer scientists and engineers who are solid in both theories and practices.
So that was a brief overview about the School of uh, Computer Science. And as for me, I think that there are several key words that I have heard. It's about what are you doing inside? So this is microprocessor design, big data, cloud computing, IT, software engineering, everything is so far from myself. But I think that what you are doing, you are creating future there. So everything what we are using right now in our uh, daily life, like computers, mobile phones, and everything like 5G and uh, new technologies, this is where it is happening. So I think that this is a very popular major right now, right? Right, this is very popular right now, uh, both in the undergraduate program and the graduate program. And the job market is very great, and the stipend and the salary is very high. Uh, actually in the China mainland, as far as I know. Wow, so you can think about it. <laughs> okay, so let's continue the introduction. Okay, uh, this introduction uh, includes two parts, and I will present the first part, and uh, Ms. Shu Yang will give you uh, the presentation of the second part. And uh, in the first part, I will talk about and share with you about five uh, topics as listed here, the history of our subject, uh, our programs, the faculty and students, global impact, and finally the alumni. So let's first look at uh, history. The computer science subject was first established in the year of 1978, like 40 years ago. And uh, later on, in the year of 2002, the Department of Computer Science and Department for EE, they merged. They merged and uh, formed a new school called EE and CS, uh, like uh, 20 years ago. And uh, later on, uh, many uh, research centers and uh, research labs was established. This greatly strengthened our research power and uh, research uh, expand our research directions. And for, for example, uh, the National Engine Engineering Lab about the video technology was led by our professor Wen Gao. And uh, our video technology with artificial intelligence was very uh, very powerful, and uh, this technology has won uh, the national uh, first prize uh, a few days ago. And uh, in the year of 2010 and the year of 2017, and uh, many international uh, scholars joined Peking University, joined the computer science department, and uh, they established uh, two other centers, the Center for Energy Efficient Computing and Application. Another center is uh, the Center on uh, frontiers of computing sciences. Uh, in the second center, the Turing Award uh, winner, uh, f uh, Professor John Hopcroft from uh, uh, Cornell, he joined uh, the Peking University in that year. And this is a very great event uh, in the history of our uh, uh, department. And uh, as the computer science subject was so uh, important in the past decade, and the Peking University had made a great decision to <laughs> establish a new school uh, called the School of Computer Science mm -hmm. this year. Uh, we just uh, had a ceremony uh, in October, on the October 24th. So this is a brief uh, overview of our history. Next. So that means that more students can right. attend, right? Yes. Because we have a second campus. Uh, yes. We have oh. two campuses and uh, we have more uh, space for the research and uh, for the education, so we will recruit more students. Wow. Uh, every faculty, maybe they will can recruit two or more uh, PhD mm -hmm. uh, or graduate students uh, each year. Uh, so I see that you have a profound history and very experienced. Right. So this is why you're thinking also of being about, about being professional and thinking about like high quality. So right, this right, is what right. I feel. And I see that right now you're talking about location. So where are two campuses? Uh, can you introduce it, please? Okay, uh -huh. the main campus uh, is located uh, in the center of the uh, Peking uh, city, and uh, the second, uh, the new campus called the Changping Campus, it is in the northern part of Beijing. Uh, the two campus has a distance about uh, uh, forty uh, kilometers. There are free shuttle bus uh, every day mm -hmm. uh, between the two campuses, uh -huh. so the uh, transportation is very uh, uh, convenient. And uh, the right uh, photo shows the uh, shows the newly admitted uh, graduate students this year, and uh, in the dorm uh, in front of the dormitory uh, building. So uh, the Yanyuan campus is our main campus, and mm -hmm. the Changping campus is a new campus. So 
uh, don't worry about uh, the transportation or other uh, uh, life affairs. Uh, we all we are all uh, we're well prepared for that. Well, talking about jumping campus, I think it, if you are a great fan of the Great Wall, then you might be a little bit closer to the Great Wall right, because right, right. it's not far from there. Yeah, by looking at the map, it's only about uh, like. Uh, Ten minutes of driving distance mm. to the uh, Great yeah, Wall. So that's so not a bad choice, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so next is about our uh, program. As you can see, we, we have undergrad program and uh, the graduate program. The right part of this slide shows the uh, three tracks about the graduate program: the uh, computer architecture, computer software and the theory, and the computer application technology. All the faculties they belong to each of these three uh, tracks. So you need to uh, make sure which track is the one uh, you want to choose because the admission system, the online system, I mean, they only allow you to choose one of them. Okay. So, so uh, this is uh, what so I want to emphasize. This is why sometimes maybe students are a little bit confused, right? Because we offer a variety of uh, programs, mm -hmm. but what areas do they cover? For example, like if we're talking about architecture, or software right. and theory, my, my, so what are they choosing the most? Like software and theory? Or as for me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me explain a little bit uh -huh. more. And uh, for the computer architecture, they are more or less uh, focusing on the uh, system work, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, building a computer system, uh, like uh, you just said, uh, the microprocessor mm -hmm. and uh, the computer networks, a distributed system. For second one, the computer software and theory, they are focusing on the uh, uh, computer theory uh, research. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the system software, like the operating system, mm -hmm. or the uh, uh, computational uh, tools, softwares, and open source software, and uh, programming languages, uh, a few directions uh, uh, belong to this uh, track. And for the third one, the computer application technologies, they, uh, they include uh, the artificial intelligence, which is a uh, hot topic right now, and also the big data analytics, and uh, other like uh, computer application uh, techniques like the uh, video technology and uh, image processing technology uh, belong to the uh, third one. Uh, as Angela just mentioned, so as you, uh, when, whenever you uh, apply to our, uh, our program, you need to first uh, choose the faculty member uh, you want to work with because uh, they belong to the uh, different tracks of these three. So then you, will, uh, you can ask Mr. Shuyang or ask me or the, or the school, uh, so which track this uh, faculty member belongs to, then you can choose oh. the, the right one. And should uh, we contact a supervisor in advance? Uh, yes, yes. That okay. Uh, but uh, the faculty members, maybe they are very busy, so, oh. <laughs> so you, you, you apply the, the school, the admission office, we will reply you uh, properly. But uh, uh, if you contact the faculty, uh, maybe there are some delay in the okay. response. Uh, so this, this is my uh, suggestion uh, and also answer the question to Angela. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can go further. Okay. Uh, this slide shows the uh, faculty and the student statistics. And uh, now we have a uh, full-time faculty, a number of 112. Uh, as you can see uh, from pie chart, uh, half of them are full professors. So uh, the, uh, the other half are the associate and assistant professors. And uh, as I remember, half of them uh, have the international uh, education background and uh, they earn their PhD degree in overseas universities. And uh, for the students, more than half are undergrad, but uh, for the graduate students, as you can see, uh, most of them are PhD students. That means Peking University and the School of uh, Computer Science, they uh, have a very uh, strong emphasis on the uh, research. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to uh, recruit more uh, PhD students, but master students is also a very uh, important program in, uh, in our school, uh, which will be uh, uh, introduced later by Ms. Shu Yang. And this is show the global impact. Uh, we have many, many collaboration uh, with the international uh, world-class uh, first-year uh, universities around uh, the world. As you can see, we have undergraduate student exchange program, research inter program, uh, short-term short visit program with uh, Cornell, Edinburgh, uh, UCLA, uh, Carnegie Mellon, and the uh, University of Tokyo, and MITEO, and many, many of them. Uh, 
because uh, uh, Peking University is top tier uh, university in China, and uh, it's natural uh, they have a very strong uh, tie with the other uh, world class universities. So, uh, in this uh, university, in our school, uh, you will have the full support uh, with the international uh, collaboration. Uh, uh, I so. Uh, so how are we proceeding with collaboration right now during pandemic times? Because it's not an easy <laughs> thing. So do you have any uh, like things or researches how to do right. it right now? It's a very good question. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a panoply. Pan Every program goes virtual online. Uh -huh. And uh, we uh, talk to the other university, to their uh, program officers, and we switch the offline activity to online. But uh, we will promise that uh, the, the offline activity will uh, get back to normal whenever mm. the pandemic uh, becomes better. The and situation. If, if a student is in China right now recently, mm. so there are also other opportunities to do some research like right. with some Chinese enterprises. Uh, yeah, right? yes. Uh, we also explore more a uh, opportunity within China mainland. Mm -hmm. For example, you can uh, uh, work with uh, research labs uh, located in China, maybe uh, for example, the Microsoft Research mm -hmm. Beijing. And uh, you can also work with uh, many uh, high-tech ta uh, high co companies in China, like mm -hmm. the Tencent Lab and uh, the uh, Alibaba and uh, Huawei and many, many of them. Uh, so we have uh, many more uh, collaboration opportunities with them. Yeah, I see that there is a strong collaboration between mm -hmm. university and enterprises and other universities abroad. So this shows that two sides can stimulate innovation and achieve a better scientific research integration between university and enterprise, so we can achieve mutual benefit. Yes, that's very important. Next is the uh, global impact in the industry. Uh, as you know, in the past uh, 20 years, uh, the internet the industry uh, booms in China mainland. We have built many, many uh, great companies as shown in this uh, slide. And uh, these uh, companies uh, were, uh, were started up and uh, were uh, led by the uh, alumni of uh, Peking University re related to our computer science uh, uh, subject. For example, the search engine, the first search engine uh, in China and uh, the Weibo, which is the uh, short uh, blog uh, of uh, in Chinese and also the DD DD is um, uh, uh, it's a like huge a platform. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a huge platform like the Uber, uh, and also in the era of uh, AI and the big data and five G. Now we have uh, auto driving uh, company like Apollo and also the uh, electricity cars like uh, Neo uh, in. in in China, they are all uh, started up by our alumni mm. uh, of so Peking University. So you have partnership with them, right? Right, right. Every company, we have uh -huh. a collaboration with them. And wow. for students, for example, is there an opportunity to get an internship? internship? Right, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes, yes, oh. yes. This That's is a very a good, good opportunity. opportunity. So either you want to join a uh, uh, high-tech company or you want to join a startup, uh, we also we all uh, bring you the full support and uh, opportunity to that. Okay. So finally, uh, I will introduce a few representative alumni uh, of our subject. Uh, all these four professors are the chair professor in the uh, in the UK or the in the US. For example, Jason Kong, uh, Professor Kong is the chair professor of UCLA, and he's also the member of American Academy of Engineering. And Professor Wen Fei Fan, he is a professor in Edinburgh, University of Edinburgh, and he is also the fellow of the Royal Society, a member of the Academy of Europe. And uh, Professor Yuan Yuan Zhou is a chair professor in UC San Diego, and he, she is the uh, ECM fellow. And Professor Hui Zhang, he, he is a professor uh, of Carnegie Mellon, and he also ran a lot, uh, many uh, startup companies. And he, he is very famous in the video uh, technology uh, industry. And uh, all these uh, four uh, professors, uh, they are uh, alumni of our department uh, in 1980s. Mm. <laughs> so they are very senior uh, uh, faculties, senior pro uh, researchers. So this is the end of the part one. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, invite uh, Ms. Shu Yang to start the second part. Yes. Okay. Welcome. All right, so thank you, Professor Ben, for a very fruitful information session about the School of Computer Science. 
Um, I'm sure that you are all very excited to learn more about our programs for international students. So in this next session, um, I will go through information about our programs for international students. And um, I also get a lot of questions about curriculum, so like what courses you can take uh, throughout your years here, um, and also student fears since I'm in this field. So our program started in 2019, um, but don't get me wrong, we have international students before, but not that many. Um, so we created a program for non-Chinese students, um, both master's program and PhD program. Um, so the highlights of the program is that it is an English-based, so if you are lack of Chinese, uh, you do not need to worry about it. And also, like Professor Ben mentioned earlier, um, many faculty members have overseas experience, which will um, benefit you in expanding your horizons. Um, so if you are applying for master's program, uh, you are able to finish it in three years. For PhD program, if you have a bachelor's degree, then it's, it will take you about five years to finish the program. Uh, however, if you have a master's degree already, um, it only takes you about four years to finish it. So we have a choice between English-based program and also if uh, our Chinese is okay and I would like to study in Chinese, I can also make a choice, right? You can choose classes like in between. So a uh, side note, in addition to the other application requirements that are listed on PKU website, our school also requires students um, who graduated from non-Chinese university to obtain the accreditation report from CSCSE. Um, and along with the scholarship that students may apply through ISD website, uh, we also encourage students to apply that first. Additional financial support from our school are also available as complement to um, PhD students um, so that we are able to make sure that every admitted PhD students will receive full financial support. Um, so in this next session, I will go through the curriculum for both master and PhD program. So this is a list of courses that you may choose from for master's program. Uh, so um, courses such as like the Chinese language, if you need to learn a little about Chinese culture, um, and also you are able to take like research practice um, or like advanced compiler techniques, things like that. Yeah, I think that Chinese language also, if it's optional, that I advise to choose it because mm -hmm. no matter if you are in China or you're abroad, mm -hmm. because right now technologies are developing so fast and you can see that China is in the center of the <laughs> global mm -hmm. stage. So I think that the Chinese might help you to find something new and maybe also help you during your research. Yes, yeah, so I think that this is a good choice. Um, and here are the courses for uh, direct PhD programs. So it's five years. Um, and um, those are the courses that you may choose from. Um, you can also contact like your supervisor to negotiate what courses they encourage you to take. And the, this is a list for a four years PhD program. Um, so um, after hearing all those, you may want to know more about things related to student affair at our school. Um, so here are some stats from our school uh, since 2017. So from the left chart, you're able to see that even though we don't have a large student body at the moment, but we have students from all over the world. So like students from Canada, UK, Spain, um, Nigeria. Um, so we value diversity and inclusion. Um, and then on the left, on the right side, um, it is pretty easy to see that since we started the English-based program for international students in 2019, the number has been growing rapidly. And in order to make it a home, a way home for international students and scholars, uh, we also created an international student office at our Chongping campus, which is the picture on the left. Um, and st uh, so students are able to gain information about university and our school in this office. As you may see that we have brochures on the desk. Um, and you can 
also just come in and relax and help you to feel a little bit like back home. Yeah, it looks very cozy and it really feels like home. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to find this kind of place and especially when you're just like, it's your first time around. I think that you really need a kind of this kind of space so you can feel a little bit relieved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also from time to time we uh, arrange campus uh, I mean company tour for students in order to help them to gain an idea like what they can do with this major. Um, I think that's very helpful for students, especially like if they don't have an idea of working overseas. Um, and also uh, since last year we hosted like online orientation for new international students. So like Professor Ben uh, will go over the curriculum and other information about school during the orientation for international students specifically. Um, and here is a short video uh, from our current international students. Um, they will share their experience uh, learning and living at our campus and our school. Okay, let's take a look. There is nothing so fascinating as future. Here, your presence makes it even more mysterious. That's why you need to explore the frontiers of knowledge. Continue thinking. Generate creative ideas. Harvest growth, face challenges, and finally, rebuild yourself. There's no limit to your future. Go and chase after the glimmer and get energized here. Hello, my name is Ben, and I'm from the United Kingdom. Hello guys, my name is Dong Ruo, and I'm from Sula Republic. My name is Serpuhi, and I'm from Armenia. Hi, my name is Chan Jun Tong, and I'm from Malaysia. Hello, my name is Mikhail, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Hello, my name is Song San Zhongdi, I'm from Japan. My name is Claudio, and I'm from Spain. 
currently I'm pursuing a PhD degree in computer science at the CS department. My research interests center around multi-agent reinforcement learning, and I picked this direction because, I'm, uh, because of my passion about artificial intelligence. I applied to Peking University because it blends the innovation of modern China with the culture of Beijing, as well as being a world-leading institute with world-renowned research expertise. When applying, I recommend you get your applications in early and speak to staff if you need any assistance, as they're always happy to help. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mikkel, and I am from Toronto, Canada. I majored in artificial intelligence, and this is my second year studying as a PhD student here. I applied to PQCS because of the great opportunity you present, the amount of financial support I will be receiving, and the academic atmosphere and integrity it has. So far, I have a very positive learning experience here. I did a year of online learning overseas, and although it was fairly challenging for me to overcome sometimes, uh, but the professors were very supportive in general. And the, off, the, on, the learning on site is a much better experience overall. And thanks to the strict measure taken by our school about the COVID prevention control, we got to resume our offline studying very quickly. And pursuing a PhD study here could be very, very challenging. And, but at the same time, it, uh, it is a very uh, rewarding process. And sometimes it could be very, very stressful. Uh, for example, you don't get to enjoy your holidays and you work seven days a week and 12, 12 hours per day. But at the end of the day, the, on, the, all the knowledge you gain in the process is yours. And you, you will have uh, academic research experience, which you, couldn't, which you couldn't get from elsewhere. And I think it, it is uh, very much worth it. Thank you. Well, I think that they really enjoy their stay. And also, I think that sometimes, well, how it was for me when I first entered uh, the university. So there was a high pressure because this university is the top of the top. Mm -hmm. So everyone is pushing so hard and you really need to find yourself and not like just go forward and trying to reach someone, but just stay on your speed and then everything you will get along with it. But it takes time. Just no worries. Just don't worry about it. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask <laughs> Ms. Shuyang. Uh, just, just don't, don't, don't feel that uh, you cannot make it. It just, it's a kind of a process of adaptation, I think. But what we have heard right now from students, I think the first thing is innovative. So they are talking about that being a part of a uh, school of computer science. It is, it makes you think innovative. And I think that this is what you're reaching right now. And also they're talking about like putting a stress on that this is a world leading institute. So this is worth to think about that maybe you can be a part of us and you will become the top of the top, right? Mm -hmm. Just give yourself a try. I think why not, right? <laughs> What I have realized so about school, uh, first of all, we're talking about is innovation, so technolo technological ability for innovation, and also school is emphasizing on strengthening scientific research. And uh, talking about some questions, uh, if we are studying here, so do you have any publication requirement, like for graduation? Yeah, that's a very important, actually, <laughs> this is the most important question. <laughs> yeah, for the uh, master program, um, I don't think that there is a, a publication requirement, uh, but for the PhD uh, program, it depends on your advisor and uh, your uh, PhD adversary committee member. Uh, uh, most of the faculties, uh, at, uh, they require you to publish your work uh, in a few uh, top uh, journals or top conferences. Uh, but this is not a mandatory. Uh, it still depends on your uh, uh, advisor and uh, the uh, committee. Uh, so, but f f for me, I will require uh, the, the my students to publish like uh, 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 three or more uh, top uh, papers. Well, that's uh, not an easy <laughs> thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, for computer science students, especially for the uh, Peking University, 
uh, students, uh, I think this is not a big problem. <laughs> so during uh, the whole process, uh, you have also been contacting with many uh, different students from all over uh, the world, right, mm -hmm. from abroad. So maybe you know what were some difficulties for them or maybe what they should think about if they want to apply. For example, one of the students told in the video that we should remember to get prepared in advance. So about documents mm -hmm. and about all the requirements, we should uh, look through and get ready. Yes, because sometimes the deadline is almost there and sometimes mm -hmm. you're just forgetting one tiny thing and that's it, right? So maybe you have some advice also like to give to our... So uh, yeah, like the, uh, what the students mentioned in the video, um, I would definitely encourage them to apply or at least then as email at gradadmissions.cs at pku.edu.cn for like questions. Um, I usually respond to it you know, very timely. Uh, so like uh, every day I will definitely check the email. Um, and so if they have further questions, I can direct them to like faculties or other staffs to answer questions if they need it um, and to help them prepare for like the whole application process. Okay, I got it. And also one question that might be interesting for uh, people who want to study here, it's about if your uh, studies are doing, you're doing well mm -hmm. and also uh, you have got some achievements, so can you graduate in advance? Is there a possibility? <laughs> 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 or of it's not possible? <laughs> of course, uh, it's possible. Of course, it's possible. Uh, even, uh, but no I one did it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I never <laughs> no. heard about uh, anyone I can... Uh, yeah, because this uh, program is just uh, started two years mm -hmm. ago, and mm -hmm. uh, for this uh, very young program, and there's no student yet. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the PhD program is a very uh, rewarding process. Uh, the I think five years is the best time period mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, make a great uh, co contributions and also you can get a reward from this uh, program. Uh, but of course you can uh, like graduate earlier, like uh, graduate within uh, four years, but uh, that still depends on your faculty uh, advisor and uh, your uh, uh, adversary committee requirement. If they agree and they sign, uh, on your uh, paperwork, that's Maybe fine. that also depends yeah. on what path do you want to choose. If you want to go right, an right. academic path mm -hmm. or right. you want to work, maybe that uh, depends, right? Right, right, right? But also I'm thinking about like technologies. It's not about like writing or uh, like research or doing research mm -hmm. on literature. So this is, it takes time. It really takes time to make a kind of yes. <laughs> achievement or something like globally new or something. Right. Yes, yeah, so it takes time. Okay, so well, I think that uh, we have been talking about scholarships and I think that everything is clear, but if you want to know some more information, so we have one video brought to us uh, by International Students Office about the information, how to get scholarships and how to apply, but basically uh, we were talking about that you should apply first for the uh, government scholarship, Chinese mm -hmm. government scholarship, and then you can also get some uh, financial support, right? Yeah, for PhD student. Okay, so maybe, uh, like the last but not the least, maybe a few words uh, to people who are watching us right now, to the audience, what would you like to tell? Like maybe they will decide to apply and become part of uh, PKU's family, so maybe you have something to say. Hello everyone, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Peking University is a top tier uh, university in China and also in the world and uh, the School of Computer Science and our subject has uh, many, uh, uh, our subject also have many uh, international background uh, faculty members and our program is very high quality and uh, welcome and uh, please submit your application right now and uh, look forward to uh, meeting you uh, in Beijing uh, in, in our program. Thank you. Don't miss a chance, don't miss a chance. Yeah, talking about meeting in Beijing, maybe that's a hard question right now because All we're right. still living during pandemic. So if we cannot make it over and come to Beijing, so we are studying online, yes? Yes, yes, of okay. course. Okay, but online is also like they have a good quality. Just yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. So, Ms. Shuyang. Yeah. So, uh, going back to what Angela just said, um, study online is also an opportunity. Um, we have quite a few international students right now who are studying online or overseas. Um, but don't worry about that because we have a group chat for international students, and they are able to communicate 
uh, within the group and help each other if they have like any questions uh, throughout the process. Um, so yeah, just apply as soon as possible and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And right now you can see we have a contact information. So you still, if you have any questions, just feel free to contact us. We have uh, email and also is there a WeChat or something? Uh, yeah, you, you see that there's a WeChat. Yeah, so you can join us and ask any mm -hmm. questions what you're interested in so you can get a full information. Just feel free to ask and we hope to see you there. And I think that that's all for today and we really hope to see you here. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. All Goodbye. Right. Thank you.